The 1980s was an era of showy wealth and gaudy excess. So when Jeff Koons burst onto the contemporary art scene with work like this, a seemingly gravity-defying basketball, the world sat up and took notice. At first glance, this artist, who specialises in reproducing banal objects with a twist, is an unusual choice for the Ashmolean and its focus on ancient history. The first time that Jeff uh, arrived in the Ashmolean was not at my invitation, but uh, at the invitation of a group of Oxford University undergraduates, the Edgar Vint Society, which is the art history society here, and they decided to inaugurate a prize for um, a contemporary artist, and in a rather studenty way, decided they would give the first prize to Jeff Koons. Surprisingly, Koons flew over from the United States to accept the prize and give a talk to students, and it was that trip that first sparked the idea of a collaboration. The exhibition spans his entire career and includes some of his most famous series. It looks at Koons's relationship with the history of art and the way he reimagines mythology. Here's his take on a Stone Age fertility statue. The work here is taken from Koons' Gazing Ball series. Here he explores what he calls his cultural DNA. By combining ancient imagery with perfect modern spheres, he's engaging in a new way with the art of the past. I think that our genes, uh, you know, automatically in our biology, we're carrying information with us that's uh, quite old, it's ancient, it, uh, uh, it comes from prehistory, and it's in our genes and our DNA, and our cultural lives are the same way. When you're able to give it up and find something greater than the self, that's how you're able to experience transcendence. This piece, The Rabbit, is one of the works that defines Coons for many people. It's a shape we all recognize, yet it is unexpectedly complex. Made entirely from stainless steel, it's a study in multiplicity. Seated Ballerina is inspired by an Eastern European porcelain figurine, but it's been reproduced on a massive scale. The ballerina's pose has echoes of the Venus of classical art, but it's also incredibly modern. You look at it, the reflection is the right here, right now, but then the form is bending, light is bending, and with these gradations, time is bending. Koons' work often hits the headlines, accused of being too expensive or too kitsch. But how does he really feel about his fame and about the huge sums of money his artworks regularly fetch. The, uh, the value of art isn't in any form of uh, economics. Uh, it's in your quality of life. It's about uh, being able to become. It's, uh, you know, the art so effortlessly brings all the humanities together. And through art, you can have a dialogue in philosophy and sociology and physics, psychology, aesthetics. I mean, the whole world opens up to you. That's what's about. Uh, my life has changed, not through uh, economics, but through an aspect of being able to reach a potential to continue to become, which art has given that platform. Koons's work is a masterclass of precision, reflective surfaces, and subversive imagery. Critically, he's been accused of banality and is loved and hated in equal measure. But situating his work within the context of the Ashmolean has the effect of sparking a broader dialogue about art today and asks us to consider how even the most modern of artists often hark back to the past. Miranda Atty, TRT World, Oxford, 2018.